What's good guys, Fancy Joe back here with some fantasy football content today. I am talking my biggest takeaways from the NFL Week 1, the Sunday action at least, obviously the Monday night game tonight, but I'm just going to be breaking down um, you know, the first game action and the fantasy storylines that you guys need to have in your head to make the moves and keep winning your league. I'll be dropping my waiver wires later today or tomorrow and then i'll be dropping my buy low sell high players later in the week as well stick around for rankings coming your way soon all that good stuff so make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that like button if you have any questions or comments drop them in the comment section down below i'll respond as always okay let's talk takeaways one of my biggest takeaways and i think this does come with a grain of salt in this 49ers bears game debo samuel's involvement in the run game we saw him get eight carries 52 yards elijah mitchell went down to injury he expected to be out in about two months Obviously, Jeff Wilson Jr. all of a sudden becomes very fantasy relevant as well as their third-round draft pick, Tyron Davis-Prince. Um, both those guys will be highlighting the waiver wire column tomorrow. Trey Lance was their leading rusher. Um, that's good for him. You want to see him running the ball. He obviously didn't look great in that game yesterday. But again, the weather was abysmal for both teams. Sloppy turf. Um, but yeah, the Debo's involvement was a huge encouraging sign in the running game for me. If I was a fantasy football owner, he's a guy I'd be looking to acquire, especially now that Elijah Mitchell's out. I think he'll have to carry a big load for them on the ground. Khalil Herbert also was involved in this rushing game for them, uh, as I expected him to be now that they have uh, their OC who came from Green Bay. They typically run their backs in a similar set to that. Um, and then not a whole lot of receiving takeaways in this game, to be honest with you. Just abysmal conditions in either of these teams quarterbacks were throwing the ball very well the other day okay while that page is loading up let's talk about another storyline Devonte adams is a legit fantasy stud obviously um you wanted to see how he would transition going from aaron Rodgers to Derek carr he is still amongst the most elite wide receivers in fantasy football to me he had 17 targets yesterday had a touchdown, had a close, a ton of receiving yards, just extremely involved in that offense. Again, he might not have Aaron Rodgers, but he's still one of the best fantasy football players out there. Um, so, yeah, definitely add him where you can. Speaking about another big takeaway that I had from these games, honestly, one of my biggest is uh, Saquon Barkley. We saw him absolutely dominate 18 carries for 164 yards and a touchdown on the ground versus the Titans. And then if we looked at how involved he was in the receiving game, seven targets, six receptions, 30 yards. If you're going to get that type of utilization on a week-in, week-out basis for a talented football player like Saquon Barkley, who obviously appears like he has the juice to do that. We saw that 68-yard run yesterday. Um, he was a guy I was extremely comfortable drafting in the second round, and I'm very excited about him moving forward if I have him on my team. Kadarius Tony, one thing to note about him, obviously he's one of my sleepers coming in, did not even receive a target in this game. That is concerning. I still probably give him another week to see if he's something, but um, definitely not the way you wanted to see things go transpire for him. Okay, let's go back here. We can keep moving. So we've crossed out the Debo and Devontae storylines. Another big one for me is this uh, James Robinson, uh, Travis Etienne running back by committee, basically it looks like, but it looks like really James Robinson's the lead back in this backfield, and that is shocking. Um, returning, I mean, he was effective yesterday, scored two touchdowns, but just returning from that Achilles injury week one to come out and be effective, averaged six yards a carry. Obviously, Etienne averaged more yards per carry um, than he did, but <clears throat> still, just... Coming off that injury, it was very impressive for him. Uh, another storyline from the same game, Christian Kirk. Look at that. 12 targets, extremely involved in the passing game. They've been utilizing him in that slot role. I think he'll be the number one for this offense. I think he's a great value if you have him on his team. I think he'll be a wide receiver two or close to season long. ETN was involved in the in the passing game, four targets. you like to see that. Uh, but just the fact that James Robinson had such a big chunk of the pie week one is very concerning for me. I expect them both to be involved moving forward, which maybe is just a thorn in the side for both of them. Antonio Gibson, though, led that team in rushing and receiving last night. Um, again, probably a lot of that was because of the bad matchup versus the Jaguars, but you can't really be picky about the running back situation. And as long as Brian Robinson continues to be out, I think he'll continue to be an option that you can start each and every week, basically, in fantasy football. Another storyline I'm not going to touch on immediately i'm not gonna go in the box score but uh if you're looking if you're a james connor owner james connor's obviously struggled with injuries in his career and you're looking for the cuff i very firmly believe it's eno benjamin at this point when you look at the snap counts from yesterday the touches that he was receiving the way that the coaching staff has talked him up recently so that's something to keep in mind if you're a james connor owner 
Um, okay, now let's talk some of these Saints storylines. So Cordero Patterson had an excellent game as a running back yesterday. That's something you got to remind yourself. Um, he was very, very good. So <clears throat> monitor him moving forward. He has another game anywhere close to that against the Saints, who are a good defense, which was the most impressive part to me in a bad matchup. He thrived. But honestly, one of the biggest takeaways to me was this Jarvis Landry, Michael Thomas duo. How successful both of them were for fantasy. If Jarvis Landry's on your waiver wire somewhere, he's definitely worth an ad after this week, seeing him call on nine targets. Again, last year he was playing really banged up with Baker, who was also playing banged up. I think he has a lot more in the gas tank than people anticipated, and he's getting the target utilization to be extremely successful for fantasy. I don't know what in the... Okay, to be extremely successful for fantasy with that utilization rate. And then Michael Thomas as well. We saw eight targets for him, called in two touchdowns. He's all the way back as well. He might not be, you know, 25 targeted a game, uh, uh, Michael Thomas, but he's still a good fantasy football wide receiver and a guy that if you, you know, the way you could have drafted him in some drafts, he might be in your flex. And I think that's a really good proposition. Another thing to point out, Drake London, seven targets, five receptions, 74 yards, talented wide receiver in year one, was successful with Mariota against a good defense, um, and a guy to keep your eye on moving. Why does this keep happening? Um, I keep muting it, and it keeps popping up. Okay, and Kyle Pitt, seven targets. Don't panic on him yet. Okay, moving down. Patterson legit talked about that. Oh, okay, let's talk about... So last night, last night we had... We saw in this Buccaneers uh, Cowboys game, Chris Godwin went down with a pulled hamstring. He's had to miss several weeks at this point. Um, but I think that makes Julio Jones extremely interesting to me. He was utilizing the rushing game last night, two, only two carries, but even if he gets a few of those jet sweeps a game, it's going to be a nice add to him. And then when you see he had five targets as well, three for 69, looked like he had to me. A report came out that he's the fastest um, charted player on their team speed wise I don't think he's lost a step and now with Chris Godwin now in one of the most pass heavy offenses in the NFL I expect him to be heavily utilized and be extremely successful for fantasy I think you can plug him right into your lineups on these weeks moving forward honestly I think Noah Brown is worth an ad um, in this Dallas Cowboys wide receiver room obviously though Dak Prescott's gonna miss six to eight weeks so that puts a damper on this whole situation just in general make you temper your expectations um, but moving on Oh, let's talk about the Patriots' backfield. That was one of my biggest takeaways as well from this week, oh, as well as how Chase Edmonds was heavily utilized on this team. I think he had 12 carries for four receptions as well on four targets. Yep, that is right. I'm not too worried about that he wasn't super effective on the ground because I think New England does have a good defense. Um, and I just think I like the workload that he's receiving. That I think is the biggest thing I took away. 16 touches. If Chase Edmonds continues to get 16 touches a game, he will be a great value for where you drafted and a guy you can play every single week based off his utilization um, and how successful we've seen him with the ball in his hands earlier in his career, especially this scheme. I think this scheme should fit him very well. But let's talk about these running backs on the Patriots. Damian Harris, nine carries for 48 yards. <sighs> this is – sorry about that, guys. I don't know. ESPN hates me. But, yeah, Damian Harris – and for Mondre, nine and eight carries. Both of them, I mean, Harris had a good day on the ground, just not enough work to really do a whole lot. But then Ty Montgomery, also involved, caught the touchdown for them yesterday, had four targets. That's what really, I think, dampens everything for Ramondre. If he's not that third down back and not receiving enough uh, passing game down work, I really do worry about where his fantasy points are going to come from. Seriously, what in the world? Um, but yeah, that does worry me somewhat. So we talked, oh, Tyreek Hill in that same game. I think Tyreek Hill is going to ball. I think he had nine targets yesterday. Um, you know, let's just go back to it. Um, him and Jalen Waddle were both pretty solid yesterday. Twelve targets, excuse me. That's why I want to go back. That's a ton of targets. If it's from two, if it's for everybody, I expect him to be able to get close to, you know, his stat line yesterday. Maybe, again, won't have the touchdowns he had when he was in Kansas City, but will still be heavily utilized and that's what you like to see for consistent fantasy performances moving forward. Okay, let's talk about the Eagles. One of my biggest takeaways. And again, it's a good matchup for him, so I don't think you should take everything just from this. But honestly, Jalen Hurts looked pretty bad to me last year just as a passing quarterback. So you wanted to see him improve. A.J. Brown, though, 13 targets, 10 receptions, 155 yards. was dominant for fantasy football. And he's a guy, once he gets the ball in his hands, he can do the rest. 
Um, so I was really encouraged by that completion percentage when targeted to A.J. Brown. Hopefully, I do expect that to continue just with the money and everything he's been given. Devonta Smith, only four targets. That's something to consider as well. All these guys, he's the alpha one on this team, it looks like. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited for him for fantasy football. Another guy to point out, so Amon Ross St. Brown, 12 targets in this game. They were trailing most of the time, but still, he's the number one wide receiver. Um, that's why he was in my values video. And uh, I'm really excited about him moving forward. And I think any owners of his should be as well. And then things on the Lions side, obviously you're starting uh, DeAndre Swift. We knew Jamal Williams was going to be involved. Basically pretty simple as far as that goes. Let's get off this page before I hear another one of those Miller-like cracks. And I had to go crack one myself. Though I'm not a big Miller-like guy. That's just me. Um, okay, let's talk about bingo. This was one of the other storylines I want to talk about. The Steelers passing targets volume. Deontay Johnson was a little banged up in this game, but it did not stop him from securing 12 targets, target leader. We saw him be a target hog last year. That's where a lot of his success for fantasy football came from. He looks like the bona fide one in this team, even though they have Pickens, even though they have Claypool. Claypool, they're going to utilize in other ways, maybe in the rushing game. Especially now, who knows, Najee Harris could potentially be injured. I don't know how that situation is going to go down. I'll obviously talk about it when I talk about my waiver wire video. Hopefully we'll have more information at that time. But Deontay Johnson and Pratt Firemuth were both very involved in this offense. I think some of that, too, had to do with <clears throat> the overtime situation of them having to continue to pass the ball to try to move the ball in short-time situations. But regardless, you like to see those target totals, and that's a very encouraging sign if I'm a Deontay Johnson owner. And uh, makes me upgrade Pat Firemuth in my mind as well. Obviously, these are not all the storylines from week one. I could talk a lot about all these teams. Uh, we saw Broncos Seahawks tonight, which I'm very excited for. But just want to touch on some of the biggest ones that I thought. Let me know what you guys' biggest storylines are to you in fantasy football in the comment section down below. I'll respond as always. And if you guys have made it to this point in the video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I want to help you guys win your leagues and my waiver wire content, my breakdowns my rankings coming into the week, my buy lows, my sell highs, playoff targets, all that stuff is going to help you do that. So do yourself a favor, beat your league mates, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to help you do it. We're going to secure that fantasy championship this year. All right, this has been Fantasy Joe. Thank you guys for watching.